Shout out Bruce Gas, aka Token 2. You know I had to drop a track for my boy. Where you at? Yeah, been here rapping boys out here till the drop. I'm the homie, you know, nigga. I ain't signed to no label. Hey, Bruce, I ain't signed to no fights on the table. I'm uh, calling that boss since Kane versus Abel. So as soon as Gas, you would think that shit was fake. I don't know if he was shaking like Muhammad Ali. Shut up, shut up, Bruce Gas. One day we gon' meet. Yeah, we gon' pull it down. We gon' smoke that little weed. Yeah, we gon' pull it down. Take a hit out the top of two. Slip a hell of shots. Feel like Tyson with the pink. A little glob on my side, but it hit just like Isaac Cruz. Shout out, man. She had real shit. That's my fucking dude. We always cooking on the pan. Straps my side. I ain't talking about no sandals. Bruce, pass me the one. I'm gonna light it like a candle. Hey, non stop bars, man. I always spit flames. Feel like Bruce Gats always got a different strain. Bitch, you ain't like me. You could never feel my pain. You win and you lose. Well, this is a fight game. Don't beef on the net. And the shit won't change. Said that on the stream. Gotta do it for the game. Said that on the stream. Gotta do it for the chat. I ain't undisputed. Yeah, hold on. I ain't undisputed, but I want all the straps. Good evening, Bruce Gas, Boxing, Jazz, and More. I hope I'm not getting an echo here. I'm working with a new sound box. So I'm hoping it's coming all right. Is it anybody out there? Please let me know if there's an echo going on. I can, I think I can do something about it. Maybe we just by doing that. That might help it a little bit. But anyway, man, you know, this is a, this is a Thursday night, the, the 21st of March 2024. We're in the, we're in spring. I believe today was the first full day of spring. A little cold out there though, man. I had to put my, I had to put my hoodie on today. And um, you know, I decided I, I wanted to talk some boxing today. And uh, I made a couple of calls and I was fortunate enough to have uh, a couple of people that know a little bit about boxing. They uh, they said on the uh, on, on the first request that they'd be stopping in. So we're just going to wait for a couple of these cats to pull in here tonight. And um, we will, uh, we'll talk about some boxing. It's been a crazy week for boxing. And um, I think we're going to have some some very intelligent minds in the boxing world come in here and join us. In the meantime, Justin James, my brother, first guy in here, I appreciate it. Mrs. Just Do, my sister. Thank you much for coming in, man. Gil Coles, my bro, salute to you, man. Appreciate it, man. Daniel Berry, Sports Highlights. Daniel, I, I appreciate you always coming in, man. Thank you so much for your support. Justin James, back again, man. Thank you, brother. I see my brother Jose Diaz out there, man. Salah. Salute, Jose. I see Ghost out there, man. Ghost123, bro. Thank you for coming by. Mr. James, my sister, thank you for coming by. Dimitar, salute, man. Salute. We're going to wait for wait for some of these cats to come in here, man. And um, we're going to talk some boxing, bro. We got some, we got some good minds, I think. I think. A friend of mine came by here yesterday, and he brought me a pre-roll. And the sucker was um, called Billy Idol. Came in this, in this tube here. Thirty percent, thirty percent. And I'm looking at the sucker, right? And it says on here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says um, it says twenty contains twenty-five percent flour. Excuse me, seventy-five percent flour and twenty-five percent bubble hash. I mean, they're really fortifying these suckers. They're making these like um. I mean, this is this is wheat on PEDs that we're that, that we're get, getting here. And pop that open. It's got the got a funky smell. Got me high as a kite. No, I I didn't I didn't see that. I I'm always in the drunk Irishman's videos, man. And uh, I didn't I didn't catch his latest. 
but uh, the, the drunk Irishman's always including me in those in the tavern videos. You know, um, hey, can't complain, man. Any publicity is good publicity. Publicity. We're gonna, um, like I said, man. I don't want to get ahead of myself and start talking on the subjects I had planned on. So we'll just start. We'll kick back. Talk about some of the other things in life. Hey, my brother, stop motion. Salute, man. That stop motion is a pretty intelligent guy, bro. He goes over to he goes over to Marcos. <laughs> He's winning those those trivias. I tell you, man, I want a trivia on um, I want a trivia on cast sports. Hey, I got somebody that's, that's, that's heading in the back right now. Before I let him in, I want to show you. I want to show you what I got in the mail today. This was from my man, Cass Sports. Probably one of the biggest things I've ever gotten. Kind of one in my life, man. But check this out. Look at that, man. A brand new Hewitt Packard. 15.6 inch laptop, man. That's going to go so well. So well with my setup. As soon as I figure out how to get it out of the box. But um, D for the win. Salute. Dimitar, thank you much for coming by. But anyway, man, I see I see. I didn't get totally ignored on my, on my, um, on my requests. I see my brother back there, man. I see my brother, the two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, terrible Tim Witherspoon. Yo, how you doing, everybody? What's up, Bruce? What's up, my brother? What's up, man? I had to, I had to make my daughter some food before we get moving. The kids I come. Know, the, man. Kid, the kids come first. Trick daddy, little kids. <laughs> I, I you, see it, man. You always got to have a smile on your face and and show love wherever you at. Let's make this I world a better. Brother. Let's make this world a better place. For sure, man. That's right. Champ Ross is out there, man. Thank you much for coming in here. And uh, hey, hey, Tim, how you been lately, brother? I haven't seen you in about a week, man. I've been all right. Um, I've been all right. Just waiting for things to happen. That's all. You gotta wake up every day. Try to smile if you're upset or sad. Try to try to make your friend happy. Try to take care of your children. That's what I'm concerned about. That's all. And making making sure we try to do the best you can. There's just too much stuff going on, man. Too much stuff. I got no time to worry about myself being upset, you know, or anything like that. We got to move forward, make somebody else happy, try to change lives, and take care of our kids because they need us. True words were never spoken, my oh, brother. Oh, listen, listen, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. This the real Tim. I haven't been drinking or nothing because I've been doing, I participate, participating in Ramadan. Even though I didn't go pray or nothing like that, I've been fasting. And you can tell I'm a little bit different. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit sharper now. No, Even no more of that wine. You put, you, you put that glass of red wine down. No, I, I, I got a smoothie. I got a smoothie right here. All right, man. Well, I you know me, bro. Water, nothing no, but HCL. That's okay. Today. That's okay. It's all perfectly hey, okay. You're a wonderful hey, let person. Me shout, Go ahead. Let me shout out my brother Just Do, who stepped in the room, stepped in the room, man. He's got a great show on every day, four o'clock. Really, really good guy. Knows his boxing, loves his boxing. That's why we're all here, man, because we love our boxing. That's right. And we love our people, whether they love us or not. That's a fact, my brother. That's a fact. Hey, I put everything in here: turmeric, ginger, uh, all this stuff, uh, onions, gar garlic, powders, protein, right here. Hey, you're looking good too, my brother. Yeah, you should be in the ring with Jake Paul, not Mike Tyson, bro. Listen, man, hey, let me tell you something. I will whip his behind, and I heard he liked me. I like Jake, but if we want to talk about exhibitions, I'm ready. I've been hitting the hammer. I've been doing all that stuff. I feel really good. I'll teach him a lesson because I got skills, which a lot of I'll people, a lot of boxers don't. I got. I know exactly what to do, know where to be, 
He might catch me sometime, maybe once or twice, but I know exactly where I'm supposed to be. You know, you do make mistakes though, Bruce, everybody. But he, he's just stepping on the scene. I called him out. I called uh, uh, Joe Egan out. Oh, I will wipe Joe Egan up. I will wipe <laughs> his behind up. You know, and and you know, me and Tyson can get an exhibition on. He's younger than me. And he's in good shape. Um, but I know that I can survive, and and um, really do good because I got a good defense. And that's what a lot of boxers don't have today: defense. Everything is offense. Hey, what did you think of Joe Joyce and Cash out and Cash Ali on Saturday? Good, good question. I when I was in England, I was helping Cash out. I was helping Cash out, and um, I was around him a lot. I was showing how to throw the overhand right. Um, he lacked defense. Um, he didn't see. He didn't seem aggressive enough in that fight to please the people in the, in the that was watching the fight. You know, and Joe Joyce to me needs a lot of help. He's big and strong. And he can use he can use uh, um, 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 some some education and the skills and stuff. He can use a lot because he can hit a lot. He, and most of your boxers that gay get hit. We talked about it on your show how many how many times did the top heavyweights get up? Dante Wilder, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Dylan White. Dylan went down maybe once or twice. They all went down because of the lack of defense. And in other weights, too, you don't see that much of defense. I keep talking about defense, and I even got a good offense. I got a good offense, too. I jab. I throw, oh, hit you with the overhand right. I go to body shot real good. But I go back on that defense because my trainer taught me how to do that. That's, that's what, I'll tell you, Cash, Cash Ali was trying to throw that Tim Witherspoon overhand right. I noticed he was. Yeah. Did, you, did, did you tell him about that punch mix? He was. That, that was his go-to bread and butter on, on Saturday. Um, I really didn't. We really didn't. I showed him a lot of it, but there's got to be somebody around him to really, so he can really execute it. As, like I was around him, I showed him, but a trainer has to keep showing you, because sometimes you'll go off the track doing it a certain way, and the trainer got to say no, bring it in a little tighter, or leave it a little this way. But there's nobody around that show him to, to really keep be consistent about throwing that overhand right. I seen him trying to throw it. It was too wide. It was too out of here. But it was in closer than a lot of other people. We kick it in and let it go like that. I see, I didn't watch the whole fight. I just watched about a round or two. That's all. But he kept backing up. Joyce got long arms. You got to you'll do better inside because his long arms he. If you're out there, it's easy. that's where he wants you. But when you come inside, it takes away from him because he got these long arms. You got to pull him in close and know what to do. He doesn't have defense either. He doesn't. He, 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 he blocks with his face. That's his, that, that's his only defense. And, he, <laughs> yeah. and now I'm saying I'm watching. No, you're not playing. You, you, you care about boxers and you're just saying the truth. Go ahead. You ain't no, I, 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 I'm watching Cash Ali throw those overhand rights, and I'm saying, that looks like my buddy Terrible Tim Witherspoon. He's just going to get some leverage on it. He's got time He's got to time Joe Joyce because he was bouncing that right hand off Joe Joyce's head. But um, yeah. Joe Joyce has got, he's got a chin like an anvil, though, brother. I know, I know. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. He got a, he got a chin. And, 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 and um, uh, uh, Cash uh, wasn't relaxed a lot. He kept backing up. He kept backing up, and um, he he seemed like he wasn't sure of himself. So I think I'm not. I don't have nothing against the trainer. I know him. That was in his corner. I forgot his name. What's his name? Um, the, the his the trainer that was in the corner. I have nothing against him, but um, I have to make the statement. They did the best they could, but did somebody could help him a little bit more? You know, because. Cause his confidence wasn't there. He kept backing up. He he wasn't sure when to throw punches. Even when he threw the overhand right, he didn't fully have confidence in that overhand right when he threw it. And he kept backing up. So Joe Joyce had the people behind him, and he was he was strong, and he just kept on coming. He know his future uh, is going to mean a lot to him if he keep on winning. But he's going to have to learn how to. How to slip these punches, defense, and everything. Joe Joyce, he can't just stay like that and want to be able to fight Anthony Joshua and all them guys. He can't do that. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna call up Scully and, and see where he oh, is. Oh, that's now. my man, John. We supposed to do something on the first or something. We supposed oh. to. Uh, oh, they're having that movie thing down in Philly. These people, one guy from England, something about. I think it's all he'll tell you. Get get him on the phone. I'm trying. It's on. The, it's, on uh, it's on. It's on the first of of this of the of next month. The first of uh, March, April, April. First of April. Scully, who's gas? Hope you're okay, bro. We're on the show waiting for you, man. Peace out. Give me a call if you if you uh, Give me a call if you can. Yeah, the yeah, first I, they come they come into Philly. They come into Philly, and you got Ali talking all of them. Go ahead, go ahead, Bruce. No, no, man. I I, I just wanted to call Scully because I, I talked to him earlier today and uh said he said he he said he loves boxing, man. John John is a he's a he's a boxing mind and um I you know I hope he I hope he's okay. I hope I hope he I hope nothing nothing happened or anything. But hey, you know how things go, man. You know we old guys we 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 forget a lot. Yeah, I know. In fact, I, know. I take I take I take this nutritional supplement. It's called Cognium. It's, wow. it's supposed to get you. It's supposed to get your brain right. Okay, I'm about. I'm sending that to me another time so I can. Um. Okay, Cognium. I heard about that. Okay. It's it's, it's actually it's silk protein. It's and silk protein is is the the number one studied um supplement for for uh. For cognitive function, so oh. you know, does does it work? I, I don't know, but I figure at this stage of the game, it's not gonna hurt. Keep trying it. That's it. Keep trying, man. Keep trying. But you gotta, look at, other, you gotta look at all the other ingredients in it because there might be something harmful in it. No, 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 no other ingredient. The That's only ingredient might. in it. See, the only the, the only ingredient in it is is, is the silk protein hydrostat. Okay. Okay. That's it. That, that's that's the only the only thing in here. And um, because I, a lot of them have have uh, like they have pepper in there. They have that the jellyfish, uh, the, the thing that comes from the gel, the, the problogen. I mean, there's a, there's, there's a lot of different supplements for memory, but this jellyfish. is a very very clean one. And um, hey, my insurance pays for it, so I'm I'm giving it a shot. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> insurance, right? Yeah. Hey, uh, look, I I think I saw Laron come in here, man. My buddy Joe, salute my brother Joe, Jose Great Diaz. Salute. Oh, oh, I think I think we got another special guest coming into the room here, man. I think I, I, I think I think he, he snuck in the back door, bro. Here he is, man. Hey, he is man. John. Nice What's man, up, John? John Scully. What's, What's up, up John? John? I was oh, in the gym. I was in the gym and uh, I, I couldn't get done in time, so I'm a little late. Hey, that's all right, brother. You, you, you're never late, man. That's we, right. We, 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 we ain't punching no clock over here, man. We're just here to talk some boxing. Hey, John. Right. Yep. John, we tell them what's that? What's that date? What's that? Uh, what's, I'm looking at it now. June first. First, June first. Yeah, tell yeah, them about the, it. The movie. Uh, they're you know they're showing the movie that they made about Philadelphia. Uh, you know, I guess the boxing history of Philadelphia, and it's supposed to be a big event. I guess Bernard Hopkins is going to be there, and tim and you know, all the all the philadelphia guys the the champions and the big names and i'm sure russell pelts will be there and you know uh it's be very very nice so uh i'm seeing a lot of buzz about it online and they contacted me and i told them i'd help them spread the word and and uh it looks like it's going to be a great event yeah nice nice if yeah, we talk we talked me and john talked about uh on, we typed we we was uh, talking about something earlier about uh, money in this video and stuff like that in this movie. If they're gonna make some money, can they break us off? Break some of the boxers off, you know? Right. So I talked. Yeah, like I, I talked I... to the guy from England. I talked to him from oh, England. You did? Okay. Yeah, I talked to him about three weeks ago, and okay. he said no. He said no. I'll take you out to dinner and stuff like that. But yeah. I got a I got a I got a call from somebody that that that's real really uh a real everybody know him. And stuff, and he he the one told me about you should Tim, you should try to get paid for this event for not the event, but for them putting the video out. Right? Yeah, I would yeah. assume. Yeah, yeah I'm I not going to say his name, but he he's credible, and he right. called me up, and that's why I said that, John. That's all. Yeah, yeah, he no, I'm me, saying, uh, yeah, I, I, like if I they make know. five or six million, they can't break us off something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I don't know if they're making five or six million. <laughs> Is that you never know. It, I mean, never I never know. even heard. Like, I never even heard of it till yesterday. 
And it's no, it's I knew not, about it about a month now. A month yeah, and a yeah, half. but I'm saying it's not like a Hollywood movie like Star Wars. You know, it's a it's more like an independent film. They, you know, they're not gonna make a ton of money off a movie like that. Like they just did a movie here uh, on Willie Pep. Ah, oh, I loved it, but I loved it. Yeah, but you know, it's not gonna be like a major Hollywood. Yeah, but they didn't tell you how much they made though, right? Yeah, you I don't mean, know. You don't know. They ain't gonna tell. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. But like I said, right. it's not even in the theaters yet. Yeah, like okay. it, they're, they're trying to get it. Uh, okay. I guess it's a, I've okay. learned, I thought all movies just went into the theaters automatically, but I found out that's not true. They have to go like they're doing. They have to go to like film festivals and screenings and people have to see them and the studio has to pick them up. You know, it's almost like, like a fighter. You might be a great amateur, but nobody wants to turn you pro and you never get to, get to go pro. You know, so, yeah, it's, uh, so it should be, it should be a contingency payment. I yeah, think. yeah. Like I say, I don't know anything about business. Even I with talked boxing. to the guy from England, and he said, yeah. he right off the back, he said, he said, uh, no, no, no. I'll get you some food. I'll take you out and get you some food and everything. I think right. I met him before when I was in England. So we, you know, we we talk about as long as long as I know I'm a fight for what I think. You know that may not what what I think is right. What I, you yeah. know, if they're gonna make money off of it. Hey, yeah. throw us, throw us something, throw us something. Yeah, That's I something. got you. you know, and you know, Tim, Tim is very leery too because Tim, Tim, you know, Tim's got the, it, 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 it's history, man. He's been screwed all his life in boxing, so. Uh, yeah, 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 so yeah. Tim, Tim is very, very skeptic when somebody says, "Hey, man, don't worry about it. It's all gonna come to you, man." He's heard that all before. <laughs> but John, no, John, be looking out for everybody. Yes, he sir. be looking out for everybody. And anything I get into, I'll try my best to get him involved. I'll call him up, and I know he it come, he comes from the heart. And I'm not saying we're on the tube, but for real, we need to do something, especially for him. <laughs> he be sending he be sending things in the mail, man. Don't yeah. nobody do that. Don't yeah, nobody I appreciate do that. it. You know what's funny? I was just talking today. He be looking uh, out for people. Yeah, always, ahead, always. Well, the, the Boxing yeah. Writers Association, you know, the dinner they do every year, which is yeah. a huge event, and I've never been to it. In all my years of boxing, I've never been to it. I just got – I found out I'm getting an award. They call it the Good Guy Award. Where's it at? An, uh, it's in New York City. It's like everybody goes. All the biggest names in the world go. The Boxing okay. Writers Association of America. Yeah. I, I heard of it, yeah. Yeah, well, it's a big event. And uh, you must have went. Like, when you fought, when you were champion, you must have been to it. You didn't realize maybe the name of it, but it's, that's what it I is. So. No, I remember that name. The boxing yeah, boxing writer. But here's the thing. I'm supposed to go because I'm getting an award, mm. and I just found out that my fighter is fighting on ESPN that same night in, in Montreal, so I'm not going to be able to go. I got to oh. go, go with my fighter. Yeah, but, hey, you know, the fighter comes first, always. There you go. That's yeah. right. Yes, sir. You definitely, you definitely have to send somebody to accept that award for you. And, right. And make yeah, a, yeah. We'll take care of that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, you know, we're, we're talking about the crazy shit that's going on in boxing today, Scully. I mean, you know, the first thing that Tim and I were just talking about, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. What the yeah. fuck is going on, bro? You just laugh when you first hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, we're, we're like... People say, like, oh, it's a great thing, you know, all these new eyes. It's interesting. Like, yeah, but the, the new eyes, they're not educated. You know, they think it's real. They think that Jake Paul is like Canelo. He's on that level. Oh, you know, no, I don't think that, but go ahead. No, I don't no, think the that. new people, the people that are watching, and you have to explain to them, oh. like, no, he's not high level. They go, yeah, but he's on TV all the time. He's making big money. How come he's not big level? You must be jealous. I go, no, man. I'm just, I'm explaining it to you. You serious? Uh, you know, it's just uh, like, like it, it shows one thing. The Like people say, oh, this guy's the best. Uh, Floyd Mayweather's the best. He made the most money. I go, listen, Jake Paul is proof that making money does not mean you're you're great because he made more money than Muhammad Ali. I mean, you're gonna tell me Jake Paul is better than Muhammad Ali? It's uh, you know, so we're being it's a lot of people are being misled by. If I'll give you an example, when Floyd fought Conor McGregor, there were so many people 
who thought McGregor was going to beat Floyd because he was too big and he was too strong. They Like I had my brother. My brother told me that he's going to beat Floyd because he's too strong. He hits too hard. And I'm going, man, like, you don't understand. Floyd is going to play with this man. Like, That's what he be, did. That's what he did. It's going to be ridiculous. And people that are so-called new fans, but they don't understand the, what they're looking at. And you can't argue with them because everything's on the Internet. They think Jake Paul has 4 million followers or whatever he has. And that they think that equates to him being great. And I look, I respect him for trying. And he's he's fighting. He's making money and stuff. But my only problem with him is when, like, he calls out Canelo. I said, you're not allowed to call out Canelo. You're, we have an unwritten rule. Even That's disrespectful when, to the rest of the When Mark world. Breland... Mark Breland may have been the greatest amateur ever, right? Certainly top five all time, right? Even when he went pro, you never heard him say, yeah, I could beat uh, Sugar Ray Leonard or at the time um, Donald Curry and Milt McCrory were the welterweight champions. You never heard Mark say he's going to beat them. He never said that because he knows he's a, he's a new pro. He's got to build his way up. So Jake trying guy, to sell himself. Jake, Jake right. is just trying to sell himself. Right. But, you know, I feel like it's super disrespectful. Canelo just must be like, what are we doing? Like, this guy's got nine fights. He lost one of them. And he weigh, outweighs me by 40 pounds. And he's talking about he's better than me. He's going to beat me. I mean, what, what are we doing here? It's mm. You know, I'm not a fan of that. Right. You know, I right. would never disrespect fighters like that. Right. So right. so how, how, how legit is this fight going to be, John? What you mean? I, I, you know? I don't know. I mean, I mean, uh, I've I've heard. And we what you mean by one. legit? No, no, legit? Well, legit. Are they going to go out there and try to knock each other out? No, oh. I heard they're wearing. They're going out there and dance and wink at each other. I heard yeah. the other day that they're, they're wearing, wearing headgear, headgear, and they're going to wear like eighteen ounce gloves and. No, uh, not not headgear. They don't be yeah, Olympic. They don't no, wear no, the Olympics. No, but John, but John, but then I heard it said Jake gonna wear it and Tyson's not gonna wear the headgear. I heard yeah. that like a couple of days ago. I mean, look, he better wear against, headgear if they're serious. He better. Nothing against Jake Paul, but here's my thing. What you as mean by boxing, that? Nothing against him as a, as a as a human being. Okay. No, I mean, but as a boxer, to, I gotta follow up. You gotta listen to my follow up. Okay, Nothing sorry. Nothing against him, but as a boxing person. Like in all situations like this, I hope Tyson brutalizes him just to show people what the difference is. You know, I okay, wanted I Floyd. That. I wanted like Floyd. Floyd is a businessman. He's a showman. He wasn't the guy to fight McGregor because we knew it was going to go rounds. If Floyd, if McGregor ever had the idea to fight Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, one of those guys. They would have knocked him out in the first round. They wouldn't have played around. They're not showmen. So they know how to how to orchestrate this kind of stuff. Even though like Floyd was it wasn't a fake fight, but they knew Floyd was smart and he's gonna box yeah. and he's gonna extend it. And he's I not think, gonna jeopardize his 49 and no, whatever that he's not gonna right. jeopardize. He, and, he knew he was and here's win. the thing. Jake Paul is promoting the fight. Yeah. I don't think he's promoting a fight that he's planning on getting knocked out in. There's got to be, you know, in the back, they say, Mike, you know you can't kill this guy, right? I mean, he has no, you know, he's, he know not, he's not winning. He knows he's right. not winning. But, 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 could, but could we see could we see a repeat of, of Holyfield and, uh, and, and Vitor Belford? I mean, Ooh. well, here's the thing. Holyfield took that fight, and he's older than Mike. He took that fight on, like, four days' notice. Okay. Mike has a couple months to train. It's a it's a little different situation. Okay. Holy I, 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 I hope I hope Mike doesn't get to it, man. I I, I, I hope Mike doesn't. Holyfield fought the MMA guy who's like oh. a legend, and Holyfield okay. got knocked out like in two minutes of the first round. Oh, well, they must have paid him. They must have paid him. Yeah, and he took the fight on like. Oh, oh, was hours. it? It was a martial arts fight. No, 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 something was wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. was wrong with that. <laughs> you can look it up on YouTube. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, but yeah, something was wrong with Holyfield and get knocked out by the kickboxer. Hey, let me let me shout out to J Roos Theory out there, man. Ghost one, two, three, Adari Pendants out here, man. Con Shawnery, 
you know, I appreciate you guys coming in here, man. And, you know, I, I, I got to shout these guys out because otherwise it'd be the three of us on a three-way phone call. We'd be screaming at each other. We got we got a million people out here watching us now here, man. We're big time. And I got, I got two legends over here, man. I got, yep. I got Iceman yep. John Scully and I got Terrible Tim Witherspoon, man. Tell I'm just that I'm going to start my show. I'm going to start my podcast back up in a, in a couple of days, maybe a week, okay? That's my man. He was a good supporter. He supported all of us. Jay Ruse, absolutely, bro. JJ Johnson, man, shout out to you on Facebook. I appreciate you coming in here, man. Skywalker Boxing's in the room, bro. Yeah, and, Skywalker, uh, all the guys, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we're, we're going through some subjects here because this is what's hot in boxing right now. And, uh, you know, I saw somebody somebody mentioned uh, um, – Adrian Broner and, and Blair Cobb. We'll, we'll get to that at the end. I, got, I, I put a list of topics I wanted because I didn't want to forget anything. I put about five, six or seven different subjects I just wanted to touch on. Nothing there, just the titles of them. Because uh, another big fight that everybody's talking about that's right down the road, man, Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. What what are you guys? What are your thoughts on that? We'll start with want to start with Tim or you want to start with, with Iceman? You know, no, I just I'm, want to say something real quick. I think that's an even up fight. I think that's whoever, whoever, you know, get the best, whoever do, do you know, get the first punch or whoever, who they, I think they're about the same. They're about the same in my, in my opinion. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm thinking, you know, if you've been, if you've been paying attention to the, the, the drama with Ryan lately, yeah, been yeah. talking about, they they made him watch they made him watch babies get raped and he's you know at the the Guista Grove in Los Angeles in California. Uh, the, the Explain go into detail. Go into detail about that. I can't well, believe what you know the place in California. They something Grove. Uh, they say all the, the the world leaders meet there every year and they do all this crazy stuff. And he said he's been there. They kidnapped him and they brought him there and. They tied him up and they made him watch a baby get raped. Like it's, you know, so he's, he's out there and his family's saying, you know, he needs help. You know, I'm, I'm wondering if the fight's even going to come off. You know, they, they may not even fight because if you, if you pay attention to his Instagram and his Twitter, he's a little, he's, he's a little out there lately. Well, what should have uh, happened to his other fights then? It, what, did it, it just pop up right now? I don't know. Like he's talking about, like I say, he's saying they they kidnapped him and they made him watch a baby get raped. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this. It, it, it was it was some crazy, crazy, bizarre stuff. And yeah. I, I I don't know if this is all a game. If if Ryan's playing us, you know, you know, because right. uh, but, but you know what? That doesn't make me want to watch the fight at all. Like that doesn't lure me in at all. Like if anything, I'm just like, man, I hope they help this kid out. I hope they get him some treatment or something. You know. Uh, and you know they they're talking about the present the uh, unprecedentedness of having um having Arnold Barboza in the wings uh, to fill in if Ryan Garcia doesn't doesn't uh, show up for the fight they've got Arnold Barboza and people are making a thing about that and so I, I looked in on that a little bit and and, and as a matter of fact uh, on on today's date Mike Tyson knocked out Tony Tubbs in in, in Japan and Don King had Don King had Jose Ribalta ready to step in in case Tony Tubbs didn't make the fight because he had a reputation of of not training, coming in flabby, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, that's that, that's something. I, I thought that was brand new for this fight, but then I found out that Don King had had that just in case uh, uh, Tony Tubbs didn't make it. And so I'm sure that it's been it's been in, set, in, in place for other fights too. But this is, this is a, another interesting thing. So if Ryan doesn't show... And Arnold Barboza steps in there. Is that is that going to make make it uh, uh, not a pay per view fight? Is that going to make mean, people want? To it pack? probably shouldn't be. You know, like the fact is, Ryan is a is the reason that the fight is a, is a draw. Also, like like to, you know, it, it's it's him and Hain. You know, so I don't I don't see it. Oh, you I have think Haney Haney got a good following too, though. Jeff, right, to but yeah, but he doesn't, Ryan, he doesn't, he doesn't like, sell pay per view. If you oh, do it like, okay. like like back in the day, Tyson could fight anybody, and it was a big yeah. fight. Sugar okay, Ray Leonard go. could fight anybody. Yes, you know, you're not gonna yes. fight an unknown guy, and it's gonna be huge. You know, you know, these guys have to fight. You know, Ryan was was half the equation. You know what I mean? He helped. Okay. He was gonna help make it big. 
Um, any other any other fight would be a letdown in the eyes of the fans. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this this is uh this is part of this crazy boxing world, and you know, t especially Tim. Yeah, I know you're paying attention to this man. R right around the corner, we got we got the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world finally happening after twenty some odd years. We haven't had an undisputed. And uh, you know, and people just not talking about it. This is this is a uh, to me. This is this is New Year's Eve and Christmas all rolled into one. Um, yeah. and anybody got anything to say about this fight? Yeah, I mean, what it's, fight? What fight? Uh, uh, Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, man, oh, two of the guys okay. that you used to own. In fact, you got that green belt right behind you, bro. And that's one of the biggest belts on the line. Yes. Well, let, me, let me shout out my brother L, L, L Dubs out there, man. Mayhem and Miracles. Uh, and th thank you, cats, for coming in here, man. I'm in here with two-time heavyweight champ of the world, Terrible Tim Witherspoon, and the Ice Man, the ambassador of boxing, John Scully, man. So shout out to my my, my two my two guests on here, boxing royalty. I'm honored to have these guys in here. All right, let's get back, let's get back to that unified heavyweight championship of the world. What's up with that? Real quick. Um, a lot of boxers don't know how to how to fight a mover, and I said this before on 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 on, on several shows, and I proved it uh, in sparring session, but I never fought a real good mover, and when you know a real, real good mover in in in, the, in a real fight, but all you got to do is stay hard, stay in shape, and go to his body, go to his body. Don't go for his movement. Look exactly, throw one twos at his body, jab him to his body, throw right hands in the first rounds. Okay? And so he's gonna forget about the head. Because everybody try to hit a mover in the head, and you're not gonna do it because he's moving this way, he's moving that way. But this can't move like the head. So Slim used to tell me, like Mike the Bounty, I said this on your show before, he was one of the greatest movers. And we, Slim said, Tim, is go to his body. This was a sparring session. Like I said, after like three rounds, he got mad, pulled the headgear off, cussed me out, cussed Slim out, threw his headgear. He was mad. And everybody knew the bounty hunter. A lot of people yeah. knew the bounty hunter. He was hard to hit. Yeah. All, I did, all I did was go to his body, one, two to his body, jab him to his body. Because this, when they moving, you ain't going to be able to hit that. But this is bigger. They get frustrated. And that's when you start throwing punches to the head and everywhere else. John, you might have a different, uh, a no, different no, technique. Sure. No, a different technique. But every time I box the mover, if their elbow was there, I hit that elbow. I hit that shoulder. I wasn't going for the head because that's they moving that elbow. Yeah. They moving. Well, well, you but know they what? Get, it's too hard to move. Yeah. Well, I, and I'll tell you another thing. Like, like me, there was times, especially as an amateur, where, and especially in the gym, like, where I, I was a very good mover. When I wanted mm. to get on my toe, I was a good mover, right? Okay. And I always remember, I say, I love when the guys try even harder to hit me in the head because the more mm. they tried, the easier it became to make them miss. They look stupid. <laughs> right. But when they would get start getting rough and get to the body, now now I had to I had to change things up. But But I actually was happy that they were trying to hit me in the head. Uh, because it was it was so much easier. So yeah, you're right. Makes and, a lot of sense. Yeah, for I'm sure. Telling you, for I sure. was trained. I was telling you, Slim was was trained. He was like Tim. Forget about that head. And about three or four rounds, about four or five rounds later, he's gonna he's gonna he, he's gonna give you the head because all right. you're doing is this, and he's gonna forget about that. And a lot of trainers don't know. I got that from an old timer, and a lot of other old timers was doing it too. And he was this guy, Jimmy Arthur, he was doing it. And a couple of other old-time trainers was, was telling their fighters to do that. And it was working. But nowadays, there's some boxers, some trainers that haven't had successful, uh, 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 you know, successful when they, and they, when they box. Um, a lot of them just was limited in their skills. Yeah. But like guys like me and John, John knew exactly what to do. I know yeah. exactly what to do. And you just, just don't see it. Tyson yeah. Fury could have could have could have beat him before Anthony Joshua could have beat him because they was head there, but they was head hunting. Yeah, and they and their defenses wasn't that great. But you know, one of my favorite boxers, and I'm sure you guys love him to death, man. Roberto Duran, who just had a pacemaker implanted. They asked they asked Roberto how he beat Floyd Mayweather, and he said, "I wouldn't even think about his head." 
There uh, you go. I, I, I would I would bust his ribs. I I would cave in his solar plex. I would take his liver out. The bird demands that he would just concentrate on the body and break his arm. Smoke. Just well, hit know, on hard, hard as you can. Hit him right here, like, arms, yeah. shoulders. That's, go ahead, that's John. Like go ahead. When, when Duran fought Sugar Ray the first time, Duran was, you know, banging on his arms, banging on his ribs. You know, he was, uh, he was rough. You know, like, like sometimes the problem is, like my when I Help first me, turned, when I first turned pro. My first promoter and manager, he was like, you know, when you get on TV, you got to be rough. You know, you got to be rough. You got to rough these guys up, you know, so they want to see you again. Got to be in shape, too, right. to get a and move. I said, I said, but you got to show me how to do that. You know, like, <laughs> you, you know, you got to show me. Like, not everybody just automatically knows how to do this. You know, exactly. there's an art to it. It's a skill to yes. be rough on the inside. And, you know, Bernard knows all that kind of stuff. And, yes. you know. So yeah, you, you it's not just it's not just coming forward and throwing punches and being aggressive. You have you know on the inside it's tricky and you know you have these tricks where you know you're turning guys into punches and they're getting mad and you know you just get them madder and you keep doing it. There and, you go. You know, yeah. Who, who like, I, 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 there you go, John. Yep. I I tell you what, I won't say his name. You know his name if I said his name, but when I was uh I was later in my pro career and I was sparring with a guy who was young. He was a, he was a national amateur champion. He was good. He was a very – he ended up being a, a pro contender later. So we're sparring. So he's fast and he's young and he's, you know, he's all that. Who so, is he, Bruce? I, I so don't look, know. <laughs> so, look, when we get on the inside, I would grab the back of his shoulder and I would pull him into me and I would hit him with the uppercut with the oh. other hand, right? That's old time stuff. And I did it like three or four times. And he goes, he steps back and he's like, you can't do that. I say, welcome to the pros, man. Welcome to the pros. You don't tell me. You don't tell me what I can do. You got to come to my level. I'm not boxing at your level. You're in with me. And years later, he talked to me. He said, yeah, man, I, you know, I learned a lesson that night, you know. And uh, (laughs) so, you know, it's a different game. You know, you have that. That inside game, like Duran was just a, a savage on the inside. I heard he could punch, I mean? too. Yeah, and he knew yeah. how to maneuver you and hit you in the, you know, in the bad, you know, the bad spots. And, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's, that's it's a boxing. kind of game. John, that's boxing. You're hitting him, hitting yeah. him on the elbow. 100%. 100%. Yeah, listen, John, I ain't going to cut you off. You can come right back on it. Yeah. See them guys that be leaving their hands out there? I hit would on break their the arm. I'll hit break their the arm. Elbow. You see them display. Floyd got a lot of young guys making that. That's a mistake. Yeah. Listen, he, if a guy did that to me, I'll break I break his elbow. There you go. I would hit him on the elbow on the outside of it, so it doesn't bend, and uh, and he would Ooh. never hold it out again. I promise you. There you yep. go. 100%. You see them doing that acting pretty. Then they go look real quick. This this is what you're supposed to do when you stick your hand. Hold on. Let me get that out there. When you stick your hand out there, you're only supposed to put it in front front of your opponent's eye, then drop the right hand. Yeah. Then drop the, then drop the right hand right behind it. Like, let me see. Hold on. Like, right there. You put it there in front of your face. Then re- split second. Boom. Bam. Yeah. But not leave it there. You ain't supposed to leave right, it there. Good, Tim, I'm glad you're saying this because I teach all my fighters that. I say, you know, jab high on the forehead. Split and second. throw the right, right hand right behind it. And uh, I'm going to show them this so they know I'm not the only one teaching it. All right. You do good. that too, John. I mean, you do that. Yeah, all the time. Oh, I teach everybody that. You got to do it real quick. Yeah, right. It's got to be like one punch. Boom, boom. Almost, yeah, right. almost like the one George Foreman caught Michael Morrow with. Kind of, kind of, kind of. To me, Larry Holmes and James Tony did it the best. James Tony hit Evander Holyfield with it about 30 times. He hit him one two, one two, real quick. He blinded him with the left and threw the right hand right behind it. It's almost like one punch. See, John, I only used it as a surprise. I didn't use it as something that you casually do. Yeah, I, right, I right. would do all my other stuff, and and that's what Slim told me. He said use it as a surprise, but right. don't use it all the time. They'll get used to it. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Right, right, right. Hundred percent. Yep. 
That's good. That's good. Now, La La Larry did it great. I remember Larry dropped Jerry Cooney with that. With that, boom, boom. It's just, it's just so fast. You're you're looking at the yeah. jab, and you don't even see that right hand bang comes straight right hand well, from know, out of though, nowhere. Larry was kind of almost illegal. <laughs> like he would open the left hand wide, like he would palm you with it, you know. And a lot of the referees they, they didn't call him on that. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and Larry had a very educated thumb too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, Ooh. for sure. I kept my hands up so he didn't he, he wouldn't hit me with that that <laughs> yeah. that uh after a while that jab wasn't all didn't really mean nothing to me. I retrained real hard a month and a half, had guys with really good jabs because we knew he had a jab. And that's what a lot of I don't think a lot of trainers, John uh and Bruce know today to practice on your opponent weaknesses. Yeah. That's yeah. what we did. That's what we did. We knew he had a good jab. And look what we did with, with Larry Holmes. We had guys with good jabs, tall, shooting jabs at me for a month and a half. Right. When that bell rung, his jab didn't mean nothing to me. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he got a good jab, and Larry got a good jab. We took it away. Bam, right. bam, yeah, yeah, slip yeah, it, yeah. slip it. Yeah, you fought work a good fight, their, man. Work you on their strips, the right? Fight. Yeah, you fought a great fight that night. Oh, sure. thank you, John. Thank you. Sure did. Sure did. <laughs> I told you, man. That was, that, I told you a million times. That was the night, the day, it was a daytime fight. That was the day that I it fought my, my first amateur fight. Oh. And I watched I watched you fight Larry, and then I left and went to the arena and fought my first fight. May Be 20th, serious. May 20th, 1983. Whoa. Yep. This is the <laughs> that was good. I only had, only had 14 uh, professional fights. Uh, seven amateur fights and only two years of training. Two years in it. I, 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 seven amateur five. I was five and two as an amateur. Yo. Really? And and then my, my Slim was saying, Slim was saying, "Yo, you're gonna fight. You're gonna you, you're gonna you, you know the promoters like uh, saying you're gonna fight Larry Holmes." And I was like, "Nah, they, my confidence wasn't." I said, "No, nah, we're too soon." Slim said, "Tim, we're gonna whip his ass." And then, <laughs> I, then when he then when he said that to me, I said. Okay, let's go. I believed in Slim. I believed in him. He said, "You're gonna whip him, Tim." And yeah. I did really, got there really good, man. Yes, you did. Percent. Shout out to this beach is better, sisters. Thank you for coming by, man. And uh, I, I saw some, a couple other people. Mayhem and Miracles popped in here. Uh, let's see. I, I shouted out Joe, man. I appreciate you cats in here, bro. Hey, Mr. Golden, Mr. Golden. Shout out to my brother, Mr. Golden, out there, man. They're all they're all telling us we're doing a great show, my brothers. And uh thank you. Hey, Who's your you know biggest weight, John? Yeah, because we're like three drunks in the corner of a bar. We're talking about boxing. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's that's kind of what it is. The only problem is I don't think either one of these guys would send me a drink, so uh, we'll, we'll have to keep that scenario out of the picture. But uh Who was but your man, biggest fight? My my biggest fight was no. a Saturday night, April. Oh, oh I'm sorry, man. No, go ahead. No, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Keep finish what you're doing, Bruce. I was just no, 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 man. I was, are you kidding me? I'm here with boxing royalty, man. I just want to zip on my lip. But let me say one thing, man. Okay. Look, 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 let's switch. Let's switch gears one more time here, man. Okay. The PBCs, big fight coming up. Keith Thurman pulls it out. We got the towering inferno now. Not now against against Tim Zhu. What do you What do you guys think about that? With this, with this, with, with this. Just last minute pull out and uh, and the shake up in the card and, and and PBC in general. Let's let's talk about that for a second if we can. You just got to be in shape all the times. Go ahead, Johnny. Well, you know, I I when when I first heard about Tim Zhu, without seeing him, I wasn't impressed because I just figured he's the he's the son of a legend and they're gonna try and push him and usually that doesn't work out. You know, that, you know. The, the relative of a, of a top fighter really doesn't pan out. But this kid's really good. Like, Tim is good. You know, Tim, too, is good. Oh, I got to check him out. I yeah, heard he, about him, John. I heard about him. Yeah, he's good. He can fight. And, okay. uh, you know, and Thurman hadn't fought. I like Keith a lot, but he hadn't fought, hasn't fought, like, in two years. And that uh, means a lot, too. Oh, for sure. You know, yeah. so um, the other guy I'm not really familiar with uh, but the, you know, it's a it's a letdown. Everybody still wanted to see Keith fight. No, they want. Well, you know, I think I, I I think Fandora and and uh, and Con and Tim Zhu is going to be a better fight. Right, this, right. This, but, but 
he's, here's the thing. Fendora, you know, he got beat. I think he got stopped. Not that oh, long. yeah. He got stopped by, by a dude named so this is kind of a thing where I think Fundora wouldn't have taken this fight if he was still undefeated. I think he took it because he had that loss and he figures this would be a way for me to get back on top in a, okay. in a big way. You Makes know, I lost that fight. I think if he was undefeated, I don't think he would take a fight on this short of notice. Um, but it's well, he was tra- he was on the end of con. He he was training to fight. He was all right. He, he's, I don't he's, think he's, he's had a decent camp. Him. You know, a fight with Tim. I don't normally a guy like an undefeated guy is not going to necessarily take a fight with a guy like Tim on short notice. Uh, but he, um, you know, you know, because I think he had that loss, he has a, he has a lot less to lose now. So I think you got to have the right strategy. He's well, you know, un, 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 undefeated Bob Oza may fight Devin Haney. So yeah, um, I mean, you know, that, that kind of throws a, a wrench into that theory. Yeah, mm. Fundor is in a good position. I mean, you know, he's tall. He's super tall. You know that. Oh, the top of the inferno. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I don't think Tim's people wouldn't have picked him if, if they know, didn't think they could beat him. If they didn't think they were going to win, you know what right. I mean. So you know, if I'm going to bet, I'm going to have to bet on Tim. I wouldn't necessarily be shocked if Tim didn't win because the other guy can fight. He's, you know, he's so, I mean, he's taller than Tim is. You know what mm. I mean? He's tall, that kid. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, he, and he's got skills. Um, but if I'm going to bet, I'd have to bet on Tim. Okay. But that's that's another interesting one. In fact, the whole card is kind of interesting. I believe um, I uh, Pitbull Cruz is fighting um, Pitbull. Lola Romero. You know, a lot of people are talking about that fight too. I mean, it's, it's it, it, there's just a, just so much happening in boxing right now. It's a lot of fun. I know um, Canelo Alvarez. The fight we want to see is Canelo Alvarez and Benavidez, and he just made a speech to, uh, yesterday. He kind of priced himself out of the fight. He yeah, wants two hundred million dollars. I, I was surprised and kind of disappointed at that from him. Like he's basically saying, "I don't want to fight this guy." You know, like that's he's pricing himself out and he's acting like Benavides brings nothing to the table. And, you know, it sounds kind of weird to me because oh. obviously Benavides brings a lot to the table. Oh, um, OK. So I was, you know, as a as a fan of boxing and I like Canelo, but I don't think Canelo realizes how many fans he's turning off with this attitude. And these Whoa, good, he's that's trying, good. You know, he's trying to act like he's the the face of boxing and he can do it every once. But I mean, this looks like he makes it look like he's ducking the guy. That's what. Whoa. That's what. It looks like, you know, he has a legacy. He has to uphold, and he right. has to watch what he's saying. He has to watch what he's saying is going to damage him. Yeah, but he's you know he's saying like the guys. He's acting like the guy doesn't bring anything to the table. I mean, that's oh. not that's not realistic at all. So, but John, yeah. John, you know when some when during my career I noticed that there's certain weapons that you use to get out of things and to get into things. He might maybe something wrong and he may try might be trying to get out of something, but he right. has to speak well, about it. it like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it comes across like. You know, I think okay. a lot of people are saying. I don't believe him. You know, I just think he just flat out doesn't want to fight. That's what people are saying. You know, that's the impression they're getting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's um, interesting. That's interesting. How about this Jaime Munguia? You think he, he uh, he has no chance against Canelo? I mean, I mean, he's, I think he's good, but you know, Canelo, Canelo to me is very good. I think Canelo is very good. And, he gets a lot of people. People are fickle. Like he was great, and then he lost. He lost to Bavol, and now all of a sudden he's not that good. I'm like, listen, losing to Bavol is no crime. You know, it's not like you're terrible because Bavol beat you. Bavol's good. I think Canelo is still very good, and uh, Mangia. I don't know. I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bet on Mangia over Canelo at all. Okay. Yeah. I see you driving that car on the on the podcast. I think that's the first time 
<laughs> in the history, <laughs> you drive. I ain't never was on the podcast and somebody was driving. That's cool. Way yeah. to go, John. The Dude, first time, I, the first time I was on a show I, with, with John, it was it was Black Star. It was a Sunday afternoon, and John was driving on that show too. And I, he, and, and I'm like, this guy, it's like a deja vu all over again over here, man. <laughs> um, He's a busy guy. But 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 John John's driving back and forth to the gym, man, and, and he's he's with one of the this is one of the biggest fights coming up in light heavyweight boxing history, and John's yeah. gonna be a big part of that. And the, that's wow. that, that's the, the Turby F and, and Bivol. John, what's okay. going on? What's what going on? With, what's going on with the Turby F right now, brother? Well, the beautiful thing about Arthur is that you don't have to tell him anything. Like you don't have to say, "All right, Arthur, you know, keep running, keep yourself in shape." Like he's he knows what he needs to do. He's always in great shape. He comes into training camp already ready. So training to get ready is very easy with him. And uh, you know he's he's in great shape already. So we're getting ready to start camp pretty soon, and we're gonna really gonna buckle down. This is what he's wanted his whole career. All he's ever focused this? on was being undisputed. And this is his dream come true coming up. Hey, Carl, I'm doing a podcast. I'll call you back. All right, thank I, you. Thank you, Bob. Every, everybody's talking about it. I'm hearing different opinions. I'm people, sorry. People 50, 50. Oh, that's okay, brother. Life, no, life goes on. I mean, dude. It was a hey, doctor. It was I, a doctor. I, I, can have, I can have a rat come running out of my wall and come running across my lap. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to react to it, bro. The doctor just called you, man. Hey. Yeah. Hey, I got I got a letter from my doctor. I've had the guy for the last twenty five years. It, you know how I, everything is like run by uh, different corporations now. They got Coastal Medical. They got the Pacific Medical. I mean, they got all these. It, it's it, it's 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 all run by 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 bean counters. And what they're doing is they're kind of getting rid of the the, the, the doctors. You know, you, you notice you get like it says PCP. It used to be a uh, primary care physician. Now it's just primary care provider. And they're sticking in these uh. These physicians' assistants and and and, uh, and nurses' assistants. I know what and you're I mean, saying. Open yeah. game, man. They they're just bouncing you from one guy to the next guy and the next guy. And I and I I, I just got that letter today, and I, I made a couple of calls. I said, hey, the buck stops here. We're our <laughs> best doctors, man. We we have to take care of ourselves, and that's you know that's the bottom line. We need we need professionals, but we have to we have to choose those professionals, and they they work for us. And it's like so. If anybody ever gets gets to get gets this bullshit by these by these uh, healthcare organizations and, and these health, health home maintenance, you're in charge, bro. You're paying you're paying their salary. They're not they're, they're not paying yours. So uh, right. I just I just wanted to, when, when you mentioned the doctor, I just wanted to get that off. I just wanted to get that out in case it hits anybody. My brother Picasso out there, Vaughn's out there, man. Hey, thank you, cats, for coming in here, man. We've been talking to some heavy hitters over here. And now we're, we're, we're going to keep it up, man. We're going to keep it up for a little bit if we can. You got, you guys got a little more time? Yeah, we're good. All right. Hey. Hey, can I get some more juice in my smoothie? It takes like 15 uh, seconds. I'll, I'll, I'll cost you, can champ. 15 seconds. Not a problem, brother. I've I, I never met a more gracious, humble man in my life than Terrible Tim Witherspoon. Yeah. The, the guy's as big as a house. At, at 65 years old, I believe he could handle himself with almost any of that. Freaking fighters out there today, yeah, man. I mean, he's, he's just a, a great guy. And I, I give him a call a half hour before the show goes on. Say, hey, Tim, you want to talk some boxing? He says, yeah, man. Just like you, Scully, man. You know, I think we, I think we got boxing gloves where our brain should be sometimes. But yeah, hey, who, who's the? Oh, Scully just might. He, uh, he, he's back out. He's back in. So right, we're playing. We're playing with technology over here, and uh, I got the greatest thing in the world. You know, you hear too much bullshit on this on this internet. You get these things called a mouse. You just say goodbye. I'll see you later. Hey, Scully, who's the baddest body puncher you can remember, or you know, that you could think of? We we're talking about body punches earlier. I'll tell you what. They don't get credit for it, but I think two two of the most vicious body punchers were Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> Tommy Hearns. Oh, stay. I think Tommy Hearns' belt, yeah. tough hook to the body is one of the most vicious punches in boxing history. Say Tommy that again, Hearns. John. Say that again. 
He's talk, we're talking about the most vicious body punches. Scully, Scully mentioned um, Tommy Hearns and, and Sugar Ray Leonard as being devastating body punches. Yeah, for sure. Tommy Hearns, left hook to the body, was horrible, like brutal, vicious. If you watch the fight, when the he knocked out James Shuler, when he knocked out James Shuler, and he hit James Shuler with some left hooks to the body that I mean, just such precision and power. And he actually he knocked James out with a right hand to the head, but he caught him with like three left hooks to the body right before that that set it up. There was a lot of good body punches. You just gotta, you know, Who's, sum them up. Yeah. I I see, I see something. I see Mike McCollum, Conchon, he puts Mike, the body snatcher out there. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll tell you. Roy Jones. I spar with Roy Jones quite a bit. To me, his hardest punch was his left hook to the body. Mm. I would say that was the punch <laughs> I looked out for the most, his left hook to the body. Curtis, Curtis but, Parker out of Philly, he was kind oh, of yeah. chopped to, to the body too. Curtis Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I heard? I always heard Curtis Parker was a phenomenal gym fighter. They said Jim okay. <clears throat> Parker was like world champion. He could beat anybody in the gym. They said he was awesome. Uh, and he was good in the real fights too, but they said he was even better in the gym. Okay. Oh, when, he was, when he was coming up, he looked like Joe Frazier in that ring, man. I mean, yes. he was he was something. I used to catch him on the on the Spanish channel once in a while, and you know, you you get him on uh you know, you get him on cable stations, uh, for the fights in Philadelphia, and oh yeah, man, Curtis Parker, he was he was the he was the goods for sure. I man. was in training camp with him too. I was in training camp with him. Mm. He go right there, at Barty. How, how, how about the baddest body puncher you ever faced at in the in the ring, Tim? I blocked all the shots. Um, <laughs> no, seriously. I, I I know you're serious. That's why I'm chuckling, man. I, 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 I take this. I take this. Lay it across my stomach. I didn't have to worry about body shots, but I'm trying to figure it out who probably was. I really didn't get hit with a lot, a lot of shots early and early I did, but the one <coughs> it was okay. I don't know. I think it hit right in the solar plex. I forgot who that was. I, 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 like, I, like Ron, I like Ron Lyle. I thought Ron Lyle was a oh, devastating. Oh, shit. Ron Lyle, he the punch. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. I sparred with Mike McCallum okay. in 1989 when he was junior middleweight champ. And, 89, uh, 89. 89, yeah, okay. in Las Vegas. And and I made sure not to get caught with the body shot. I said, look, we can do whatever, but I'm not letting <laughs> I don't need to find out if the right <laughs> is good or not. Like a, and, uh, and he didn't catch me with it. He didn't catch me. <laughs> but yeah, but he, I, uh, I trusted that his reputation was was legit. <laughs> he, he's working out in Vegas now, man. He still sounds he still sounds salty, bro. I bet Mike McCallum will still handle himself in that ring. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I see him. I saw him uh, last year. I was out in Las Vegas. He was at the uh, place called City Boxing, and he was he was one of the him and Joel Casamayor were training fighters there. Hmm. Jerry Cooney was a hell of a body puncher. Con yeah. Shirley point that out. Yeah, let me tell you, sure. let me tell you something quick about that. When I was sparring with him, when I was sparring with him, yeah, he was I when I first went into camp, I seen all these guys standing up against the wall. One had this was broke, one this was wrapped around, it was all busted up. And when so <clears throat> it was me and what's that? Oh, what's it? Jeff Sims. Oh yeah, Jeff Sims was tough. He was the only sparring partner. Everybody else was broken up, and I was like, "Slim," I said, "What's this?" And he said, "Tim, don't worry about that. Just do what I tell you." And so when Jerry leaned down and throw the left, all we did was just step over, just go like this, and we left from there because he's big and tall, and he wasn't real quick. So so Slim said, "Tim, this is all you got to do." As soon as he leaned in to dip to throw it like this. He would lean like that, John, right? Yeah. You just go down, lean, right? And and all you got to do is step over. We left him this like this, standing there like yeah. that, and just step over. But he, he could punch pretty good, Jerry Cooney. Yeah. Now, where did you – you went to camp with him? Um, we were up in the Catskills. Yeah, I mean, like, it was, he had a fight coming up? 
He he was he was going to fight and he not Kenny Norton. He's going to fight Kenny Norton and wow. I was one of his sparring partners and they sent for me and we went up there my trainer and everything and I actually had fun. I, yeah. I was I, I was new. I had about what seven fights maybe. We'll figure that out. But yeah. Slim Slim navigated made me comfortable by by telling me exactly what to do and we made it through. It wasn't right. easy. It wasn't easy easy but. He didn't. I ain't let him hit me with that uppercut. Right. Yeah. 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 You. Yeah. You. You fought smart. You box smart. Yeah. Hundred percent. That's it. Hey, you, you know, it was a great fighter too. Somebody was mentioning it, and I saw something on YouTube today, man. Somebody put a little little clip of uh of uh Joe Frazier sparring with Jimmy Young. Oh, Jimmy was smart. Jimmy, Jimmy was smart. He hit me in my solar plex. He just went like boom. And he was smart. Jimmy was smart. He kept his hands like this, though, awkward, like this. But he yeah. boxed you. You know what I'm saying? Jimmy was uh, smart. Hey, hey, you think about Jimmy doesn't get the credit. He, yeah. He, like, George Foreman and Muhammad Ali was one of the biggest fights of all time. Like, you know, oh. maybe, you know top three, maybe, all time. And he, he, he beat one of them. And gave the other one a life and death fight. I mean, nobody else right. can say that. You know, 100%, nobody else 100%. on earth can say that. 100%. And, yep. um, you know, a lot of people did, thought he beat Ali, but he was a little too defensive. But he certainly gave Ali a close fight. And but didn't he, he stop forming? Didn't he stop forming? No, they went to this. He, he dropped George once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dropped him. He dropped him. He won a decision. And I'll tell you, I won some dough in that fight. I was in a bar, and I could see I, – I, I knew Jimmy Young because I just saw Jimmy Young go 15 rounds with Ali. And I, I knew you weren't going to hit this guy with a fucking – you know, if you had a handful of daggers, you weren't going to hit Jimmy Young. And and I, I could see George Foreman was tiring out. He's dead. He's like this. Oh, oh. And, and the bartender saying, ah, George is going to come back. George is going to kick his ass. I said, nah, Jimmy Young's going to win this fight. Oh, you want to bet? I said, how much you want to bet? I said, uh, how much you I said I'll, I'll, I'll bet you we set up the bar in 50 bucks. He <laughs> says, you got it. Bango. I, I, I'll never forget that night, man. I walked out of there drunk and with a $50 bill in my pocket, bro. And, uh, man, you know, Jimmy Young, God rest his soul, bro. I, yeah. you, know, it, you know, Don, Don King took Jimmy Young to the cleaners, man. Yeah. You know, Jimmy Young was a he. He was such a credit to the game. I, I felt he, he gave Jerry Cooney hell for a couple of rounds till till Cooney busted him up too, man. Yeah, I sparred him. I sparred him, and he was smart. You see, he hey. don't look really big and strong, but he know how to box and he know how to get to that solar plex. Cause he hit me in that solar plex. Boy, hey, let me shout. Let me shout out. Let me shout out my brother D Five. I saw World Combat Sports in here, man. Thank you for coming in. Anybody else? Yeah, Captain Chaos, bro. Thank you, Cats, for coming in here, man. I got a couple of G's of the game in here, man. Iceman John Scully and Terrible Tim Witherspoon. We're talking boxing, bro. Anybody have any questions they want to ask us, man? Put them right in the chat. We'll be glad to, we'll be glad to answer them, man. So let's, uh, what do you think about the, uh, the um, Adrian Broner coming back now and, and taking on Blair Cobb? Any, 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 any uh, thoughts on that, Scully? John, you got to tell her hand to that one. None. I have no interest <laughs> whatsoever. In the, I mean, you know, enough is enough. I mean, you know, Adrian was a was the guy 12 years ago. You know what I mean? Like it, you know, we're not talking last year. It was that long? I mean, whatever. Like it's been a long time. Like I would say 3 or 4. No. no. It was no, longer long than that. Time. Long time when he beat Jason Lindau and those guys, he was that was a long time ago. And, and here's the thing: let me look. He's online. He's like Ryan Garcia. Like, you know, I think there's some issues there that okay. need to, that need to be dealt with. You know, a lot of these guys. If you think about it, a lot of these guys, they're on their own. They're still the same as they were when they were kids. Like, they don't have any guidance. Yeah. They're doesn't guide them. They're on their own. They have a trainer and a manager and their promoter. Uh, and, you know, they're they're freaking out and, and mental issues and personal issues and all these different things. And nobody cares. Nobody cares really about these guys. Where's I the guy that give them, where's the guy that gives them support? Like I had a guy that 
that you know, you know, this guy like he's really cool with you and run with you and what kind of person is like his like his guy that's really that gives him confidence? Did you know of any? I mean, you know, I, did you had a guy that gave you confidence that you was around all the time when you was boxing, right? Uh, for part of my career, I did. Yeah. Okay. I had a guy that, well, Adrian Broner, bro, he, he was with Floyd in the beginning, and he, and he wanted to be Floyd, but uh, you know, they went their separate ways. Oh. But Adrian Broner still thinks he's got the drawing power of of, of a Money Mayweather. And, yeah, um, I, I, mean, I thought Adrian was retired like four years ago. Oh, well, he was okay. just smart. I, I just brought up box rec and um, the, the fight with Pacquiao was in 2019. That was in January of 2019. Okay. And he lost that one. But he had a fight with somebody named uh, Giovanni Santiago in okay. 2021. He won a, a decision. And he just fought that guy that everybody says he's a lawyer, Bill Hutchison. It was only uh, six months ago. And it was on one of those Don King cards from the casino in Miami. Okay. I don't know if you've seen those. But um, yeah, I mean, a couple of basically journeymen. And um, and 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 now he's taking on Blair the Flair Cobb. It's entertaining and stuff, but uh, hey, it's 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 kind of part of of what's happening in boxing because most of the fights we talked about tonight, you know, we talked about um, you know, Mike Tyson, the uh, Ryan Garcia. I mean, it's it's it, it's it's celebrities intertwined with boxing. It's it, it's a whole different whole different sport than what I grew up watching, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm not into the entertainment part of it is this you know shows and I, I i and a lot of new fans are they're young and they like the talk and i'm not i'm not amused by any of this you know and now like and i sound like an old guy but it's but it's true now every young guy is on you know at every way in they're trying to fight with each other and they're looking tough you know like you guys like you didn't even do that with larry I mean, you right. were a young guy, and you're no. fighting Larry Holmes, but you respect. So I gave him respect as a great champion, right? Yes, and I gave him respect. Yeah, have no respect, and young people like that. I don't like that. I'm not impressed by that at all. And it was so a I privilege for me to get a fight with him. Go ahead. Of course, of course, it you recognized it. You still wanted yeah. to win, and you still, you still were all those things, but you showed yes. respect. These guys today think. Being disrespectful is the way to go, and nah, it's, it's foolish. It, it, it ref, you know, it doesn't reflect on you well at all. Right. No, that's the, that, that's the internet age. You you say things without the repercussions, like Mike Tyson said. You know, you get away with this shit on the internet. Back in the day, you get a punch in the mouth. Right. Nah, you know, it, it's it's but it's it, it the world, unfortunately. It's, it's it should be an area it's, for that type of stuff you're talking about. And but you know the thing is, man. Everybody's talking about Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. I don't care if it's a boxing site. I don't care if it's a non-boxing site. Everybody's talking about it, and and I, I think that fight's going to do unbelievable numbers. I mean, I I, I don't know about pay per view because half the people know how to stream fights now anyway. Well, no, but they the eyes on the fight. The, the fight really... is free. The fight yeah, is on. Uh... The fight is on Netflix. You go yeah, on Netflix. Netflix. Well, every, then, then everybody's going to be watching that man. The eyes yeah, of the I mean, world. I don't care. I'll watch it. I'm going to predict a billion people be watching that fight if it's free. Oh, I don't care. Oh, oh, okay. I don't care. John, you hardcore bastard, you. I'm boycotting <laughs> it. I'm not watching it. Yeah, because it's not for the best. Uh, it's not for the help. It's not for the boxing industry. It's yeah, but really you know, I'm the kind of a guy, if I walk out in the street and I see a couple of bums going at it in front of my house, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get some odds on the fight, man. You know, I mean, I, I, I love combat sports, and and uh, hey, it, not not now that I understand, I, I'm not even going to feel guilty about streaming it. You bet your ass, I'm going to be watching this fight, man. This yeah, is all yeah, it's free, but it's free, me, and it, it, uh, it's a uh, uh, Saturday night out. Let me just tell you guys, I just got home. I got to get inside. I got to take care of some stuff, so I'm gonna have to bow out of the conversation. Yeah, I'm hey, gonna I, get ready I, to go. I'm, I'm getting ready to go, too. Mind. John, you love you, listen. John. Love you, man. man. So, Tim, okay. I'll see you June 1st, all right? Yeah, yeah. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have fun. Okay. Yep. All right, guys. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank all right, you. John. See all you right, later. guys. Be good. All right. Yeah. All right, man. That was, a, that was a, a friend of Iceman, John Scully. Ice and you know, really nice guy. John, John's at, John really immerses himself in boxing. He's at all the events. 
He goes to all, all the meet and greets, all, 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 all the amateur fights. And, I mean, and, and fucking don't John. You know, what, you, know what else, you know what else he do? He send checks to a, a lot of the boxers. He, he, he send me a couple of checks. Oh, out, of nowhere, that, out of nowhere. And then he, 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 I don't know where he get the money. And then he sent me some more stuff to autograph. When I send it to him, then money came back in the mail. He need to be in there. I need to be president. Nah, he need to be president. <laughs> I need to be vice president of a new boxing organization so we can take care of the boxers. He, his heart is in it. He is. Oh, oh yeah. I you know, know where the checks came in. I, I, I didn't know about that, Tim. And you just told me that. And man, you know, that just. That that just that just puts him up on a higher peg on on the ladder, man. You know this. Not this, this not, not one time, not two times, about seven times. Damn. Yeah, out of nowhere, check coming to me. I said, John, why are you doing this? He said, Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry know, about it. And you know, he never he 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 never mentions that. He ain't looking for for, uh, for 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 credit. He ain't looking for people to say, John, you're the man. You know, he he, he did that. And I, I never heard of it. I, I hear about it from you for the for the recipient. I don't hear it from the guy that gives it. Sent me a hundred dollars in a check. Sent me fifty. There's, there's a special place in heaven for, for John the Iceman Yes, it is. Brother. Sent me, yep, sent me some autograph pictures to sign. About a week later, money sent me money in the mail. He said, well, sign this, Sim. It came in the mail and I signed it. I see he said, sign this is for uh fans, right? And I signed it, put it back in the envelope, send it back. And in the mill, a hundred dollars, a hundred hundred dollar check. Sweet. And then he I sent it without me doing anything. He was sending stuff, and I said, "John, you got to, you can't, you don't have to do that." But he be selling autograph stuff or whatever, and then getting the money and sending it. He be doing stuff like that. Man, yeah, that that that, that, that that's a heart of gold, bro. That's that that yes, that's it just, is. That's just so 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 powerful, so so cool. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And Tim, you're, you're, you're a cool cat, too. Hey, how about showing us that belt? Can you bring that belt on, online over here, man? <laughs> this is the, the WBC Heavyweight Championship belt, man. This is the belt that he got when he, he beat Greg Page for the title. And, man, you know, he should have got that belt when he fought Larry Holmes. But yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's the most prestigious belt in boxing right there, man. Yes, that's the, that, 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 that That is the... Um, you can read it. Yeah. It, World champion, WBC. That 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 is that is something special, my brother. Let me tell, tell you. About, you let me tell you about. Go ahead, finish. No, no, you finish, man. I I'm okay. just blabbing. Let me tell you about this one. When you get this after winning, after winning the title, they give you the belt that you won from your opponent who had the championship, and then um, after a while, they they will give you a duplicate. And and then you got to give them the original WBC. They let you hold the real belt for a while. Then they send you a duplicate. So what they did with me, I had trouble with the promoters and everything. Um, they took the belt and everything, and they didn't send me one. Um, and um, I had to, like, try to fight for one. But this, my, my agent in England, Kevin Baker, arranged for them to send this to me. So this came from England. This came from England because I was fighting against the people that was in power. I was arguing and fighting with the with the people that was in power that controlled this belt, um, you know. And so they didn't send me a belt back, the, the duplicate. So, so I uh, uh, he he they gave me this in England. Jose, Jose Suleiman. Well, Jose was 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 Jose was is, was my friend. He was cool, but he had to do what those guys were doing. You know, he had to go along with them. Duke Durgan, Don King, um, Jose Solomon, he was cool with me, but he had to do what they had to do. Don King was a promoter. You know, he was a promoter. How about, how about that? How about I'm the cool WBA with Don. Belt. I'm cool how about with Don. The, how about the WBA belt? That was, that's, oh, I didn't have no trouble with the WBA. I didn't have no trouble with them. Where is it? Where is it? Um, Let me see. The WBA, that I think they took that back and never sent me a duplicate. If they no. did, no. What yeah, the fuck? Never, yeah, I don't think I either. I, I lost it somewhere or somebody stole it. I can't remember, Bruce. That's a shame. Man, you I'm got, you got, it. you got to get another one. You know, we're I'm gonna, gonna we're gonna do. I'm gonna do the best I can to, you know, whoever, whoever I know. I mean, I, 
I, I know some low people in high places, and, and you know, maybe I maybe I can ask them to, to replace that belt because I mean, you sitting there, you got the WBC over the right shoulder. We got to get the WBA over the left shoulder, brother. And that was two time North American and one time USBA, but those little belts, um, I got them. So I got one or two of them somewhere, uh, maybe at my mom's. I don't know. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get a trophy, a trophy uh, case for you. Put those yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So hey, you know what we gotta do too? We gotta get, we gotta get the Raiders together, bro. We got, we gotta get your, we gotta get your podcast going. You know, we gotta, yeah. we, we, we gotta get all them crazy old boys from the Don King day days, bro. Yeah, Blood Green um was in. They flew Blood Green out to California, so. Blood Green was out in California. Um, I think they, they did. They definitely shot a podcast. So he did a full podcast, guys. And you can see it on um, YouTube. Uh, it's on YouTube. So uh, a good friend, a good loyal friend of his, Casey, somebody who's been keeping in touch with him, trying to help him, flew him over there, and he did a podcast. And I think it's on YouTube. So uh, you guys can check it out. Blood Green, Mitch Blood Green. Did his first podcast, but we were trying to do it. He did a podcast. We all did the podcast together, but we were trying to get a real good, legitimate podcast with him, um, get him walking again and all that. And so Casey been looking out for him, and I really appreciate Casey uh, Casey really looking out for him. If he needs some things, he contact Blood, see if he needs something, you know. And, and so he went up to the West Coast, and he came back, uh, and he looked pretty good. I got to check it out, though. I didn't see it. I just saw it on the internet, and I said, whoa, blood, what are you doing? So he called me up and said that's what I knew where he was. That's my mustache there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some more stuff to talk about, and then uh, what you want to oh, do? Oh, I mean, it, 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 it was a great show. I mean, I'm just, I, I, I can sit here and pick your brain, man. You know, if you if, if, <laughs> if, if, if you, want, if you want to go back, back to the Philadelphia days and talk a little bit about the, about the Philadelphia gym wars, man. Who was who was the baddest guy in Philadelphia back in? We gonna do it like ten more. Want to do like ten more minutes? Yeah, ten more minutes, man. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, okay. So I heard, you know. Okay, so in in the street, in the street, you know, everybody was doing boxing and stuff. And this is where I knew I know what the Philly shell really is. The Philly shell ain't all this stuff. The Philly, all the Philly shell is, and I'm gonna do it on my podcast. I said I was gonna do it on a podcast. Right. When when we opened up on the first podcast, but all the Philly shell is, is this. That's all it is. This is all the Philly shell is. It's not all this stuff. It's not all this stuff. This is what the Philly shell is. And when the boxers in the street, when when everybody be in the street and they say shell, get in your shell. This is all they do. That's a shell. That's the shell, not all of the other stuff. Now, when 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 um I do the podcast, we already doing it on this. That's all they do. Cause when they I seen the older guys out there, go oh, get your shell tight. And all they did was this. This is the Philly shell. That's all. This is it. A shell, like an egg, you can break it, it's all it's solid, right? And there's no part over here, no part over there. It's not like this. No, the shell is this. It's this. That's all it is. And when you throw multiple punches, you just shell up and tight. Elbows be tight. Elbows be tight against your body, and your head be on these there. That's the shell. And you're catching them on your shoulders and on your arms. That's what the shell is. I don't know where they're getting all this other stuff at. I don't know who did all that. Oh, this is the Philly shell. They, no. When they when you used to say shell up, just get it tight like that. It's oh, you can't get through this shell. And it makes a lot of sense. A shell is just an egg, and it's and it's just round, and and th and this is a shell. It's not like it, this. It, it, it protects the pearl inside. Yeah. Now I don't know this. I never know. I never and I never heard Slim Robinson, Georgie Benton, Joe Frazier, Ali. I never heard them say shell until after they pass away. I never heard the word the, the term. Philly shell until I retired. I didn't never hear it on the gym or nowhere. So I was, these, I was young, a, these young guys is, is bringing that up. I was in a podcast with James Tony, and somebody said the Philly shell to him, and he looked at him like, 
what are you talking about the Philly shell? You know, Philly shell, you know, he, it, 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 it was it was just you know it, it was strange you know Joe, I guess James Tony had he had a, he had a different defense he had that cross arm you know and he yeah. you know, he was uh, he did he did something like the shoulder roll a lot um, and he didn't complete it but he was successful see I'm really good at this stuff now I can see where he could add more too when he keep doing this so because he kept going to this side all the time rolling and then throwing the punch back. But then I seen him come back on this side. So he rolled this way and then come back on the right. And then one time, but not all the time, I seen him go on this side and throw the left hook. So you got to be able to go on both sides, you know, on both sides. But but this is the Philly show. When he do that specific thing, nobody gave that a name. This, you know, boom, boom. I never heard Jimmy Offer, Slim Robinson, Joe Frazier, none of those guys saying these terms until after I retired. Philly Shell, I start hearing that, that that that's that's this that's this new this new generation, the millennials. Yeah. They got they get they get new lingo, bro. You know, it's it's definitely not old school stuff. Cause I know I never heard it. I, I'm on the outside looking in. Yeah and I've never heard it. Hey shout out to the Bud Files out there man rolling with the punches. I see my brother Picasso in the room man. Thank you cats for coming in here. You know we're at, we're, we're kind of winding down man. I, I'm honored to have the Two time heavyweight champion of the world. My Your friend family. Boom, bro. I mean, dude, this is this is boxing royalty. I just had the the the, the heart and soul, man, the great John, Iceman John John Scully in here, man. Scully, yeah. George Makovic was supposed to join us, bro. That's who that's who the original show is gonna be, man. You know, George from Pro Boxing. Who? Jo George Jakovic. He 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 was he, he's a uh, he was a, a broadcaster on HBO. Whoa. He used to be on here with me when I when I did the Tuesday He's night fight. He's gonna come on. He was going well, to come he was going. He, he, it was going to be me and him. And I said, let me get a couple other people in here. That's when I called you up and I called Scully up. But George never showed up. It's, you know, George last week George was working for for Pro Box. Okay. And, 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 and something happened. And you know, I wanted to get get George on here. In fact, you know, I, I texted him last night and he said, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, George never showed up, but hey, that's that's another he, show, my brother. He ran into he ran into a girl. Something <laughs> like that. Hey, I wish I, if I was an old and married, I'd like to run into a girl myself. But uh, hey, this is the, this is that the, the hands I've been dealt. Tim, you must. How's your love life doing, my brother? You're looking um, sharp. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to sacrifice and just in case some type of. Uh, sparring thing or some kind of exhibition. Uh, I just want to be ready so I can take care of me and my family. Um, and you know, I'm not greedy, but in the meantime, you know, like I haven't, I well, see that there stuff you're doing and drinking. This is like my 10th day, and you see my eyes are open. But when I was doing the podcast, I was like this, right? That's now, alcohol, man. That's a, yeah. that's the the demon alcohol. And that's that puff. <laughs> that's that weed too. <laughs> that's the weed too. So my eyes are. I'm looking, and my eyes are wide open. <laughs> yeah. So it. I. You know, it was a medic. A medical thing. It's a medical thing. You know. And um, that's not, I take it for medicinal purposes only, even though it's legal in my state. I take it for my arthritis, for my anxiety. I haven't had a drink in 23 years. Ooh. I only, I, I I don't do pain pills. I don't do cocaine, yeah. heroin. I don't do none of that shit. Yeah, I don't mess with medicine. The only thing I do is the weed, man. I I, I love the herb. It's God, a medicine. God, God gave it to me. I, I asked him one night. He said yes. He said yes, Bruce Gas. You have my permission to smoke the herb. So man, <laughs> you ain't hurt no, you're not hurting nobody. Hell no, man. If I, if I wasn't smoking, I'd be hurting somebody. The first thing my marriage would be down the toilet. Me and my wife, we 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 love the herb. It keeps us together, man. And you know, and, and my boxing community out there, I find a lot of people they they like to smoke the herb. Even the ones that don't, I you're one of the only guys I trust that don't get high, Tim. What you say? You're one of the only guys I trust that don't smoke the weed. <laughs> You know, you're, you're a little bit different, bro. You know, you're a shucker and a jiver, but but a lot of these people that don't smoke, you're uptight. I and, drag uh, sometimes. I drag sometimes. Uh, well, yeah, that's, I, that, but, but, but uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying, man? The people that don't smoke it, they're uptight, and, 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 yeah. and I don't know. I think I think they need to, man. 
Yeah, I'm not taking medicine. I'm gonna do my. I take smoothies. I take all kind of natural stuff. That what about uh, that like, tonic? You still taking I, that tonic? You still taking the tonic? Yeah, I still got a little bit left. I got a, as a big bottle I had. I still I took some about right after the. the, the I stopped fasting at seven o'clock. I started eating food. I took I took a little spoonful of that, and before uh, the sun came up, I took um, I took some before the sun came up. And I ate, I did a smoothie like this before the sun came up. I did that and put lots like, of peanuts and everything in it. And I drank it. I felt real good. My bowel, my bowel movement, everything, hundred um, percent. Everything is working pretty good. I just got a little bit of numb, a numbness on my left toe, and it's starting to fade away. I found out that turmeric, ginger, and and a couple other things um, help your arteries. And and it's kind of like easing up a little bit. I was, yeah. I, I kept, I kept stretching, like stretching to see if that would help. And it felt like it was doing a little bit. But when I started putting ginger and all that stuff, yeah, no, I, those are those are natural vasodilators. And what they do is they explain your. What the hell does that mean? Food. What does the hell that mean? Hey, yeah, you know, I, I <laughs> living. What that means is it gets more blood flow to to, to, to the rest of your limbs. It it, it, uh, it opens up your 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 your. Uh, your, your, your blood vessels, your, your body's able to pump more blood. Beets is great for that. But anyway, yeah, man. That's how I got beets. I do. I got beets, celeries, and carrots. Now, now my you know, juicer. Well, look at you, man. You're 65 years old. And you look about no, 30. I'm 66. I'm 66. 66. 66, and you look about 36, man. Oh, thank you. I wish, well, I you, wish, do, brother. I wish you could tell one of these girls to give me a call, man. You that know, was my next question, man. How's your love life? How's your love life, my brother? Um, I'm concerned about the children right now. Um, I do call people and you know, call sometimes here and there, but my main focus is to get my health right. So, you know, because this is things are not really moving, moving pretty good in this world. Uh, I want to be able to protect myself if something go down. Um, but I'm looking forward to things getting better. But in the meantime, I'm taking care of my kids, my daughter. Eating right, eating properly. I want to be ready if something negative come. I'm not. I'm not going to look for it. But but the way things are going, it looks like things might. But but it might go like this, then fade away. And let's hope that a lot of things in this world just fade away. And, and, and you're in the gym on a regular basis too, my brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, I took off because I was training. I was, I was hitting a hammer with a hit. I was hitting a hammer, hitting a heavy bag. I was teaching. I was doing everything, and I and I felt I felt good. But if you slow down, you just and the older you get, and you slow down, you're gonna you know you're gonna everything fast will close in. You got to keep tell, moving. When you're young, you, you when you're young, it. you can get away with it. <laughs> but when you're older, the next the next couple of days, you you, you know I, and, and, and you're right. You know I I I saw, I saw a, a a dear friend of mine today, and yeah. I, and 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 he just had a. But last year, the last year has taken so much out of them. And, and, you know, you can, because like you said, you know, you slow down, you can't pick it up again. And I try to tell these guys, because, you know, they, you know, I, I took care of myself for, for, for the last 30 years. Okay. You know, I ate well. I was in the gym every day. Okay. I, 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 I took care of my body. But, but a lot of people my age and your age, they didn't take care of themselves. And they and look now, 20 years older. And every year it's getting worse and worse. Yeah. And this, this this dear friend of mine, I saw him today, and he could just about walk. He's got pains wow. in his legs, and man, and and then there's nothing I can do. I, I, I'm just saying, you know, I'm saying, well, you know, take your dog for a walk, try to get some circulation, just get out there. Uh, but but I that it's like it, Bruce, it, it breaks my heart to me. It breaks my Bruce, heart when I see what's happening, man. I just I was on the internet, and I send this letter to this message to my kids and everything. And a doctor came on the internet and said the third leading call, the cause of death in this world is medical medicine. The third leading cause of death, death is medicine, medical, not, not this all natural stuff. Yeah. And, and I send it out to my kids. I say, hey, just check it out. I send it out to friends. But this doctor came on and said the third leading cause of death is medical medicine. I'll try to send it to you if I can find it again. Like I, I kept, I saved it and everything. No, I I understand hundred percent, man. Yeah. You know, 
that, that, medicine, that comes I... back to what I was saying before. We have to be our own physicians. You know, we, we go to professionals, but we have to take our, our health care is ultimately our responsibility. And we have to watch what we put in our body. Somebody was saying it today, man. Not just what we put in our body, but what we listen to, what yes. we look at. It's it's everything that we that we absorb. And man, you know, I'm 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 trying I'm trying to be a better person. I want I want to look as good as Tim Witherspoon. <laughs> I, what you mean? Look at me. I'm going bald or something. I put oil on that. <laughs> nah, don't worry about that, man. You're looking, you're looking sharp and clear, my bro. But hey, man, you know. I, I kept you on here long enough, man. I, 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 I appreciate Just give me a call. Give me a enough. call again. And, and, you know, give me a call again. You know, we family. Um, I, like I said, see, my, my parents, that's because I wasn't drinking or doing nothing, and, uh, um, and, you know, for the last 10 days. But when you see when I come on, I'm like this, like that, <laughs> and talking and stuff. But your eyes don't go like that. Why you, you you do it and your eyes don't get small? Why? Because that's all I do, man. I'm used to this stuff. Now I can do. I get this vape, and I just puff on this, and that's I could, yeah, that's, I, that's, that's I, cannabis I could, I, in there. Yeah, yeah, cannabis in there. I could, I could go before a judge, and and I could argue a case. I could, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I could, I could go to a, to a wedding, to a funeral, whatever, man. You know, I just keep this in my pocket, pull it out, and I'm gonna go make me some. Cause I all I did was get this after after when the sun went down, um, you know I start the fast from the night. I only eat I eat like uh, vegetables and peanuts and stuff like that, and then I get up in the morning before the sunrise and I and I make smoothies and I put everything in it and that lasts that lasts like I just got to be strong. Then and then when the sun go down, that's when I eat again and I got to do that for like twenty something more days. You're probably gonna lose ten pounds. You're gonna look. You're gonna look. In, you're gonna be in fighting shape when you come out of this. That's better than dieting, man. That's yeah. That's uh, and, and and you're eating clean, clean, clean foods and yes. Uh, and, and you're not eating any meats. No, I I haven't eaten no meats in a while. And and um, so I uh, I man, I be putting everything in the apples. Dude, we gotta we yeah. gotta get nutrition. We gotta get with a spoon nutrition going. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> I'm doing the right thing. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna yes, make some plant-based stuff. I'm gonna make some plant-based stuff right now for for dinner and stuff. Um, hey, before I forget, I'm gonna talk to Ray Mercer on Saturday. Oh, what what's up? A friend of mine's gonna get him on a show, and he's gonna, he wants me to come on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you a link. You can come on there with okay. us, man. Okay. All right, yes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you before that, but that's Saturday. We, we can probably day. talk about our fight. We can talk about me and his fight too. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Okay. Everybody out there, man. Keep your make sure you sub to me, put the notification on because we're gonna be talking to Tim Witherspoon and Ray Mercer this weekend, bro. And he um, everywhere too. He everywhere. He everywhere, man. And, you know, he can't it, sit and, still. And, uh, he, he can't sit still, Bruce. Ray Mercer be everywhere. I'm like, God, where this guy? <laughs> I'm scared he flies everywhere. <laughs> hey. Okay, then call me if you need me, okay, Bruce. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you for having me on the show, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and look forward to the next one. I see you God later. Bless. God bless my brother. God bless. Bye bye. Hey, I put a little, little tunes on. I'm back. I'm back in a solo chair again, man. But uh, thank, thank you all so much for coming in here with me, man. I had the, uh, I had the the great champion, man, terrible tin with a spoon as, as my. As my co-pilot, I had I had the, the the legendary John the Iceman Scully, a true historian, and man, I found out some things about how big his heart is today, man. It totally blew my mind. But um, Bruce Gas, boxing, jazz, and more. Thank you all for coming in here, man. Dimitar, Captain Chaos, Vancelot, rolling with the punches, Misty James, Adari, the Bud Files. Musically zone boxing. I I miss you, brother. I seen you snip snip in, but man, I don't know, man. My mind goes a hundred miles an hour, and, and I don't want these wheels to roll out to run out of steam. So we're, we're trying to keep it going here for you. But um, once again, man, much love. Thank you all for coming in here. Loose gas, boxing, jazz, and more.
Shout out Bruce Gas, aka Token 2. I'm out. You know I had to drop a track for my boy. Uh, yeah, been the arresting boys out here telling the I'm the hard young nigga. I ain't signed to no label. Hey, Bruce Gas pushing no fights on the table. Uh, calling that box since Kane versus A. Scoring too much gas. You would think that shit was fake. I don't know if he was sampling like Muhammad Ali. Shut, shut. Bruce Gas, one day we gon' meet. Yeah, we gon' pull it down. We gon' smoke with Louise. Yeah, we gon' pull it down. Take a hit out the top of two. Split the hell of shots. Feel like Tyson with the beat. A little block on my side, but it hit just like the crew. Shout out, man. Shout out, real shit. That's my fucking dude. We always cooking on the pan. Strap to my side. And I ain't talking about no sound. Bruce passed me the blunt. I'ma light it like a candle. Hey, non stop bars, man. I always fit flames. <laughs> Feel like Bruce Gates always got a different strain. Bitch, you ain't like me. You can never feel my pain. You win and you lose. Well, this a fight game. Don't be on the net and the shit won't change. Said that on the street. Gotta do it for the game. Said that on the street. Gotta do it for the trap. I ain't undisputed. Yeah. Hold on. I ain't undisputed, but I want all the straps. Yeah.